educators from OPI. And tonight we're going to show you our classic French as well as our modern French. When I say modern French, it's also reference to the ombre look. We're going to do this with gel color as well as our powder perfection. So if you have any questions tonight during our demo, Lindell here will answer any questions that you guys have. Hi everybody, go ahead and send me all your questions to the live stream. I'm happy to answer them. All right, so let's get started. So I have my model here. I've already prepped her. And you can get the step-by-steps or any of the videos on our OPI education app on your Android phone or your iPhone. You can download that. So after your prep, you want to go ahead and use your Bond-Aid. Your Bond-Aid rebalances the pH level as well as dehydrates the nail. So we're going to apply one coat. And you only need one coat of this. You don't need any more than that. So now I'm going to start off with our gel color base coat. We're just going to take a little bit. You don't need a lot. And you're going to get as close as you can to that cuticle. We're going to cap the free edge. And I'm going to have her cure for 30 seconds. When it comes to your gel colors, you want to make sure that you shake every single bottle, even your base, your top, and your colors that you're going to use for one minute. You want to make sure that you actually mix so the consistency is actually the same. So make sure you shake. And when I mean shake, you really want to shake those bottles. And it's a good idea that you can set a timer because as manicurist, sometimes we go like this and think this is like kind of one minute, but you really might want to set that timer and actually shake it for one minute. So I've already shaken all mine tonight, so I don't need to shake them. So with the classic look, I'm going to actually use our um, bubble bath as well as our alpine snow tonight. So I'm going to start with one coat of bubble bath. You're going to get as close as you can to that cuticle. You want to make sure that you don't flood that cuticle and the sidewalls. And because this is a sheer color, you might have to work it a little bit just so you don't have any streakage. Um, and you also want to make sure you cap your free edges on each coat. And we're going to have our cure for 30 seconds. Then after that, we're going to do a second coat of the um, bubble bath to make sure we have that nice, clean uh, bubble bath look. I just wanted to say hi to Stacy from Maryland. Thanks hi, for Stacey. tuning in. Also, Jessica from Florida and Shelby from Virginia. Thanks, everyone. Hi, Nicole from Massachusetts. All right. Now we're going to do our second coat of bubble bath. And all of our gel colors, when you're actually going to cure, they only need 30 seconds in our LED light. Cap that free edge and go ahead and put it in there for 30 seconds. I'm going to show you guys a couple of different ways that you can achieve this classic look. With the Alpine Snow, um, I know that several manicurists do it a different way to achieve the French look, the classic look. So I'm going to go over just a couple of them and you can decide which one you prefer to do. So with this one, I always consider this one kind of like old school how to do a French. You can go down and you don't have to be perfect because you're actually going to take a brush. So this is a corrector brush. You can take any corrector brush that you have and then you would actually correct with your smile on. To make sure that you can do it, you can also use a little bit of our NAS 99. And you just want to spray it onto your brush. And then, so you don't drown out your Alpine Snow, you want to make sure you wipe that brush. And then you can actually correct this and make your beautiful smile on. That's one way that you can achieve it. 
So I'm actually gonna wipe this off with a little bit of our NAS 99 and no worries, you're not gonna do anything uh, to the color of the bubble bath. The next way you can also do it is you can take the brush straight out of the bottle and you can swipe it from side to side. So you wanna make sure that you don't have a lot on your brush and actually you can brush it from side to side to create that small line. Just wanna say hi to LaTanya from Baltimore. Thanks for tuning in, we hi, appreciate Tana. it. All right, so that's another way you can do it. I'm gonna wipe this one off as well and then I'm gonna show you my final third way to do a classic French. I'm gonna take one of my wipes, I'm oh, sorry, one of my wraps and I'm just gonna put a little bit of Alpine Snow on there. We had a question about flash curing, Lisa, if you'd like to address that. Sure, so flash curing, this is uh, really good with this as well. So when you actually create your smile line, with this one I'm actually gonna use an art brush and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of the Alpine Snow. So if I come in here and I'm actually creating this line. And let's say, let's say that I've decided that I like this line over here and I wanna flash cure it before I start with the rest. I can go ahead and stick this in and flash cure it for about five seconds and it'll actually stay on there. So then I can go ahead and continue and I'll have that straight perfect line that I want it's really good if you're doing nail art and you have a design that you're doing and you want to try to do it. That way you don't have to stop and it can bleed out to different colors. You can actually just go ahead and do your design, flash cure, come back, do a little bit more of the design. This is really good for when people are doing portraits or uh, when they're doing a lot of line work, maybe even some dotting. You want to make sure that you actually flash cure that. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. And I'm just going to kind of fill this in as I'm going. And I'm just going with her natural part of her nail. And I'm making sure that I'm capping that free edge as well. With the brush, you just have a little bit more control of how much you're actually putting on there. So I'm going to actually take a little bit of my NAS99 on my brush and I'm actually going to correct a little bit of this. You can use your corrector brush if you want. That's the beauty about this product is it's not going to stay there until after you cure it so you can get your smiling perfect and then cure it whenever you're done and you'll be good to go. Now I'm going to have her cure this for 30 seconds. And then next I'm going to use our top coat. gel colors we have over 200 colors in our gel so just remember that anytime you're doing Frenches or the ombre look you can actually choose whichever colors you choose uh, to create your own. Okay, now we're going to talk to Hi Peggy Sue from Illinois. 
and Kristen from North Carolina. Thank you guys for joining us. Tap those free edges. And now we're going to go ahead and go in and cure for 30 more seconds. I just want to say a quick thank you to Color Box for allowing us to film here tonight. We really appreciate that. That was really great of you guys. Now I'm going to take one of our wipes, our Expert Touch wipes, with our NAS99, and I'm just going to wipe the sticky residue off of the gel while she's finished curing. I also had a, had a question about the nail art brush that you were using, if mm -hmm. that was an OPI. I answered it on here, but just in case anybody else was wondering, yes, that is an OPI brush. It is an OPI brush. Um, it actually has your uh, brush on the one end, and then it's a daughter on the other. So that's your classic manicure. And then we're going to move on to the ombre with the gel. So now I'm going to use the base because she's already prepped with Bond Aid. Make sure I cap those free edges and I'm going to have a cure for 30 seconds. metallics uh, when you're using like the metallic colors you want to make sure you actually cap the fridge first um, and then actually apply your gel color that way you won't see the streaking from uh, when you use those metallics or some of the really really shimmer effects so you would just kind of do it opposite opposite you would just um, go ahead and do cap the free edge and then apply the color so with this one we're actually going to use Samoan sand and foamy button so I noticed earlier today that I like, because the Samoan sand is a very sheer color, I want to go ahead and do one coat of Samoan sand before we start the ombre. So like I said, you want to make sure you get up to the cuticle area, make sure you don't get on the sidewalls, and make sure you cap those free edges, and we're going to cure for 30 seconds. Now while I'm waiting on her to cure for 30 seconds, I'm actually going to have the same wrap. I'm going to take some of our top coat that we have and I'm actually going to put it on the wrap because I'm going to have this for my ombre if I need it. I'm going to grab this top coat from you for one second. Sure. Um, we have a question from Steph and she wants to know what the shelf life is on um, gel color. And on just about any product and with all OPI products, if you're able to turn it around and look at the back, there's a small jar that's there and it has a number as well as on this one it says 18 M. So that means it's 18 months from the time that you originally opened this till the, that's the shelf life on that. And just make sure when it comes to your gel that you don't have it next to sunlight, like uh, next to a window. You want to make sure that you actually have it away from that because that can also uh, do damage to the gel color. You want to make sure your product's like in an area where you have uh, kind of a, like the darkness of the regular um, room, uh, just so it doesn't do damage to it. All right, so now I'm gonna take my Samoan sand and I'm gonna start at the cuticle area. And I'm gonna bring this down about mm, almost halfway then I'm going to take our funny bunny and I'm going to go ahead and put it as close as I can to it. It's okay if you get the funny bunny uh, on your brush because you can just wipe off your brush before you put it back into your bottle. Now I'm going to take the same art brush that I had and we're going to go like downward, uh, kind of upward. I'm blending this. I'm kind of actually kind of floating this. We don't want to put a lot of pressure onto this and when you do ombre you can do one coat you can do two coats you can do any color that you would prefer I actually go side to side as well to kind of blend this that's all you're doing is just blending so you want that fade to look really good if you need to you can also use a little bit of 
your top coat to make it blend a little bit better if you want to. It kind of dilutes it so you can actually like a real pretty blend. So you just keep working it. Like Glendale said, this is the wonderful thing about gel color. You can keep working until you decide you like the way it looks. So I'm actually going to get side to side. Go up a little. And as you can see, it's actually blending a little bit better. This does take a little bit of time, uh, but it's actually a very, very pretty effect. All these steps, in case you're just now tuning in, all of these steps you can find on the on your iOS as well as your Android apps. So um, in the App Store, it's OPI Education, and it's the same name um, in the Google Play Store. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cure this for 30 seconds. And then I'm going to actually come back in and I'm going to do a second coat of this because I want you guys to actually see uh, how pretty this is on camera. And like I said, you can switch up the colors. You could do uh, bubble bath, you could do passion. You could do even just different looks if you want to. You could totally do any color you want with this technique. All right, she's almost done. I'm gonna go back in and do our second coat. And I'm gonna do the same technique. Just kind of go up and down, side to side, and just kind of blend that. If anybody's just now tuning in, um, she is right in the middle of doing the modern French with gel color. And she's using Samoan sand and Funny Bunny. I'll take that art brush again, and I'm just going to kind of blend this. I go downwards, I kind of go up to bring in that funny bunny color up, and then I'll probably go side to side maybe a little bit just to kind of blend this because we don't want any of the marks uh, where you can kind of see. We want it to be a nice gradual look. We have a question here. Um, would you cure after each nail or just paint and move on? I would actually, that's a great question, I would actually cure each nail, even just the flash cure, just to make you, you make sure you have that nail set, just in case your client uh, happens to move or bump into anything, we want to make sure that we don't have to redo that nail, because <laughs> we know sometimes that happens. Okay, I'm just going side to side to kind of blend that a little bit better, just so I don't have those marks going up. I think that's starting to blend the way I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cure this for 30 seconds. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the top coat. So I'm gonna let her cure for 30 seconds. Now if you want to too, you can also add uh, glitter to this if you wanted to, to kind of make that real pretty ombre look. Um, you could add any of your embellishments, anything that you wanna add to it, you can. Again, we're going to apply it. Make sure that you cap your free edge. We're going to cure for 30 more seconds. And then when she's done with her 30 seconds, then we are going to wipe off that sticky residue. Um, we got a question about how much the UV light is. And it is at Marlowe Beauty, it's $350. It's a great light. Um, it's an LED light. It actually has an auto and manual, uh, as well as a power on, power off button. It does have 15, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and 60 seconds. Uh, you actually, as you can see, you can actually see, I can see the time. 
The great thing with the auto is that when they apply their hand in there, if they try to move it slightly out, it'll actually turn off so you know that it's not curing properly because their hand is moved outside of it. The tray also comes out to where you can do uh, pedicures as well. And it's also a dual cure light, so it also um, cures our Actium Heart Gel. So now I'm gonna wipe off her sticky residue. And then there you have it with the gel color. You have the classic French and the ombre look. Thanks everyone for tuning in and thanks again Colorbox for allowing us to be here tonight. We really appreciate it. All right, so now we are going to go ahead and switch over to Pouch for Perfection. So tonight we're using the same colors. We have Funny Bunny, we have Alpine Snow, we have Bubble Bath, and Samoan Sand. Quick tip on the Powder Perfection. As you can see, this one is in black writing. The rest are in white. This is your clear powder. So if you're taking it out of your cabinet, um, you can actually make sure you see if it has the black writing. You know that that's your clear and not one of your Funny Bunny or your Alpine Snow. And then also when you put it in your little container, you might want to write a C on it so you know that that's clear and you don't get those two confused. I had another question about the gel color. They would like to know if that was a technique that you could use on longer nails. And you absolutely can use that on any length. Um, if you want to put an extension on, you can do that with using your hard gel or maybe an acrylic to have those a little bit longer. But gel color is meant to be on nails that are about an eighth of an inch long. Alright, so I have in here Alpine Snow and I have a bubble bath. And then of course I have my clear over here to the side. Now with the powder, you want to make sure, this is a stir stick that I have. You can also use um, a cuticle uh, stick as well, but you want to make sure that you stir this product because you can kind of see it's kind of dense right now. So you actually want to stir it and make it more of a fluffy consistency that'll actually lay better on the nail. So we just want to kind of fluff these up and make sure you clean between each time you stir. Okay, and we're just going to reset the powder. This is our dabbing dish that we have with our essential kit. Uh, you can also use it in a cup if you want to. It's just easier sometimes to do the classic French with the dabbing dish. All right, and my model has already been prepped, like I said, um, and you can get those step-by-steps in all of our videos for all of our products on the OPIA Education app. So I'm just gonna use Bond Aid. And then I'm gonna start with our Powder Perfection Step 1, our base coat. You're gonna take that base, and the trick to powder perfection is you don't need to be really heavy handed on your base coat. And the more you use it, you'll understand your consistency. You wanna get as close as you can to the cuticle and the sidewalls without touching her skin. And all of these products right now that she's using, um, this base, the step two, which is the activator, which is the top coat, are available in the Liquid Essentials Kit. Okay, so you're going to apply, put it in your white, and then I'm going to pull her finger out, and I'm actually going to turn her down, her finger downwards just a little bit, tap that off, and go straight into the pink. And then I'm going to tap that. I'm going to let that dry just for one second. Uh, when you're doing powder perfection, you want to make sure you do the whole hand, one hand first, with your two coats of color, and then your clear, and then your activator, and then you're gonna set that hand aside, and then you're gonna work on the other one. So with Powder Perfection, it's a little bit different. With any other system, with lacquer, gel color, um, our 
Infinite Shine, you actually uh, go hand to hand, hand to hand. This is a little bit different because of the timing on everything. You're actually going to work on just one hand. So I'm going to take a brush and I'm just going to lightly brush her off. Very lightly, you don't need any pressure. We want to make sure that we actually get underneath the nail, around. We don't want to pick up any extra powder onto our brush and our base coat because it can actually mess, we contaminate our base coat and we don't want to do that. So now we're going to go back in and do a second coat. Thanks everybody for tagging your friends in this. Just get everybody on here. It'll be a lot of fun tonight. With uh, Powder Perfection, if you happen to miss a side or a section of it, don't worry about it. Go ahead and coat another coat. You can do three coats of this. The reason being is if you try to fix a mistake with just fixing like a little corner or an edge, what happens is, is you're gonna have either shadowing could happen, or you can also have it to where uh, it's gonna look a little bit lumpy, so you're gonna file on that side, and it's not gonna look really pretty when the finished product is done. So I'm actually gonna just set this to the side because we don't need this one anymore. Let me get rid of my pink. And then, like I said, I'm just gonna lightly dust this. I'm gonna dust underneath. And then now I'm gonna go with my clear. So here's my clear. And then we're gonna use my base again. And we're gonna cover the whole nail. The reason why we do clear is several reasons with our powder perfection. Is number one, when you file and buff, it's actually gonna create a little barrier from the color so we don't actually file into the color. Uh, so we do two cuts of color and one coat of clear. Now, if you can also do two to three coats of clear, if you have a repair on someone's nails, if they've actually like broken a nail, you can actually do a full coat of this and then go ahead and finish off your manicure with regular lacquer. You can also just do clear if you want to do clear. If you have a client comes in that really just wants a little bit of extra strength and they can't wear the gel color because they need that extra strength, you can actually use two to three coats of your clear as well. So we're going to lightly dust this off. I'm going to dust underneath. And then now we're going to do step two. Step two is our activator. This is going to activate our base that we've used. Um, so when you actually apply it, you want to make sure that you apply it um, pretty heavy handed. You don't want to just apply it like this. You want to make sure that you actually get in the grooves and you apply it to where it's going to go through all the layers. You don't want to saturate too much. You don't want to go like um, too heavy on it, but you want it just enough because if you don't use enough activator, it can't actually dry the product for you. So when you start filing, it's not completely dry. So we're going to let this one sit and let this one activate because like I said earlier, when you, if you do powder perfection, you do one hand at a time. So this whole hand, all five fingers would be done with activator and I would let this hand sit aside and then I would go to her other hand and start this, all the same process on this hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the ombre look with the Powder Perfection while this one is drying because this uh, system is all about timing. So we're gonna go to this finger. This finger right here has already been um, prepped. We're just gonna put the Bond-Aid on again. Now with this one, I'm gonna use the same colors that we used on the last one. So I have Funny Bunny in this one and I have some Owen sand. And as you can notice, I don't have a lot of product in here. That's something else that I wanna tell you. If you're gonna dip your client's finger into a container, you wanna look at the length of your client. So you just kinda need to gauge how far are your client's nails so you can see how much product, so you're not wasting product. With this, with the ombre, I don't need much product at all because I'm actually gonna use a brush. This is an old acrylic brush that I had. Uh, you can use a makeup brush. Uh, I would just have something that uh, kind of will make the powder flow when you're doing your ombre look. So I would test out different um, makeup brushes just to see how well it flows. This one to me it gives the perfect, um, the perfect ombre look, so I prefer this one, but you can use whatever you want. So we're going to take our base. And I'm going to coat the whole nail.
And with Power Perfection, because it is a resin, you kind of need to work a little fast with it, but you'll get used to it once you've used it a couple of times. So I'm actually gonna start with my Funny Bunny. I'm dipping my brush in. I'm gonna place the finger upward because I want this to flow. Can you see how it's kind of flowing? Make sure you look when you're doing this of your airflow in your salon because it can actually blow it a different way so you just have to kind of manipulate it to go the way you want it. I'm gonna dust off my brush, go into um, Samoan sand and I'm gonna bend the finger down because I want it to blend with that. This is a little kind of a messy project, so it just, it is what it is. <laughs> and then we're gonna tap that. I'm just gonna wait a few minutes. With the ombre as well, same thing on this one. You may wanna do two to three coats. A lot of people do three coats because uh, when you do this, it does dry pretty quickly. So when you're actually creating it, sometimes it can dry um, and you don't get a full coat consistency. Like this one, you can see it kind of dried a little quick on me. So I'm actually gonna probably do three coats of this one. I have another question and then one would like to know if the kit, if you have to buy it in a kit or if you have to buy it piece by piece. And Marlo does carry it in a kit. There is an essential kit. It has your base coat, it has your activator and your top coat, as well as the dapping dish. It also has your bond aid. Uh, it does have some instructions in there as well. Um, and then we do have two different sizes that comes in the Power Perfection. What I showed you earlier was our smaller size, and we also have larger sizes when it comes to the French colors, like the Alpine Snow, the Funny Bunny, all those. So I'm just gonna let this dry just for just a second or two, and then I'm gonna um, dust it off, and then I'm gonna do my third coat. And the cool thing about this too is when you do it, like say, I haven't dusted this off, but say when you see the funny bunny right here, if I want more of that funny bunny to go up further on the nail, you can go ahead and do that on your other coats. This is really pretty when you add different colors. You could do pink with a really, like you could do show me your tips with um, like a like a princess rules. If you want some shimmer, you could do any color that you want. You could also mix colors. So say if the snow and sand is just a little bit too much, uh, um, like a tan or a peach to you, you could add maybe a little bit of Funny Bunny, mix that up, and you can custom make colors for your clients. So as you can see, this is getting a little bit better consistency, but I still want to do a third one. And when you're applying your base, you want to make sure that when you're applying it, you're kind of holding the brush to where it makes the product go down to the free edge. That way you don't have so much of uh, what I consider the difference at the cuticle area where it's a little bit smoother so you won't have to file as much. So I'm gonna start with my snow and sand. I'm gonna hold the finger down. We have a question from Rosie. Um, she would like to know why we need to use the Bond Aid first. So like I said, Bond Aid rebounds that pH level and it also um, dehydrates the nail. When I say rebounds the pH level, when any time that you actually cleanse the nail, because we don't want any oil on the nail plate whatsoever, it's kind of like a canvas. If you have a canvas and you're getting ready to paint a painting, you wouldn't want to put like olive oil on top of it because the paint wouldn't stick to it, right? So we want to make sure that like basically our nail is our canvas. So when I strip all of her natural oil off her nail, I have like totally messed up her pH balance on her nail. So when I apply the Bond Aid, it rebalances that pH level, and then it also does dehydrate. And we want the nail to have no oil whatsoever, even if you're doing regular lacquer, infinite shine, if you're doing enhancements, if you're doing gel color, power perfection. We use it for every single one of our systems. Um, like I said, when you go on our app and you see the step-by-steps or all the videos, you'll see the different uh, ways that we do dry prep. Um, and that way it ensures that you actually, your beautiful canvas, stays beautiful for quite some time and you have no chipping or peeling. Thank you. Yep. So now I'm gonna wipe this off. I'm gonna make sure I wipe under and then I'm gonna go in with my base again and I'm gonna do my clear coat. And 
And like I said, we do that clear coat because we want to protect that color when we're filing and buffing. Okay, we're going to dip that in there. We're going to tap that. I want to say hi to Linda from Arkansas Pass, Texas. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. Now with this too, um, anytime you're done, <coughs> excuse me, anytime that you're done with your actual base, you want to take some of your remover, we have Expert Touch Remover, you want to apply that on to one of your wipes, your lint-free wipes, and you want to make sure that you clean around the base. You don't want to have any product on that base whatsoever before you actually close it up. Just a little tip. Thank you for that tip, Lisa. Sure. Now I'm going to dust this off, and I'm going to go ahead and apply her activator. And this is your step two activator. Okay, so while that one is activating, I'm going to go ahead and start with her file buffing. So this is our Edge one, uh, 180 file. You're going to need this to go around the side walls and her free edge. And then you're going to go around the cuticle area. And when I was telling you earlier, you want to make sure you hold your brush up when you push your base down. You want to kind of feel, and you don't want to have this lump here that stops you. Uh, that causes you to have to file more. So when you get your consistency up, you really won't have that. So you really won't have to do much of the filing at all. You'll just have to do buffing. So I'm just going to go around to make sure that's a nice level. We have another question, and they wanted to. The person wanted to know: um, Are you capping the free edge with your base coat? No, I'm not capping my free edge with the powder perfection. The reason being is if you cap your free edge when you put it into the powder, what's going to happen is you're going to end up having this huge lump at the end. So we do not cap at the free edge when it comes to the powder perfection. It's a great question. Okay, we're just going to file this. And this is that great thing about having the clear on here. Hi to Nicole from Warren, Michigan. Thanks for tuning in. And Jocelyn would like to know where you got your cute big pink brush. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I'm not sure. Um, you can check Marlo Beauty Supply um, and see what kind of brushes they have, but I'm not quite sure where I got this. <laughs> it was in one of my mini travels, sorry. <laughs> But you can use any brush that you want. You can, um, you know, some people use makeup brushes. It just all depends on uh, what you like and what actually will help you remove the powder. Okay, so now we're going to go into buffing. So we're going to start off with our Flex 100-180. Just remember on our buffers that the rougher side is on the back side of what I consider it. This would be our 100 grit. And then when you turn it around face side, this would be our 180. So I'm going to start with our 100, and I'm actually going to buff this to a high shine. And as you can tell, I kind of buff down because we tend to like when uh, we're filing, we go back and forth, back and forth. You don't want to have any scratch marks on this whatsoever. So I kind of file down to kind of get rid of those scratch marks. We have another question. Um, they would like to know how much you would charge for a full set. So that's a great question. Um, we do say at OPI, we don't know your location and where you're at. So we suggest a dollar a minute, uh, no matter what product you're using. At first, uh, this powder perfection sometimes can take, for a full set, it could take you with prep and everything about 45 minutes to an hour, just depending on how quick you pick it up. Um, and then sometimes people are so quick with it, with prep and everything, they can get it done in 30 to 45 minutes. So depending on your area, just I would kind of do some, um, like investigating and see how much in your area they charge. But in all, we normally say a dollar per minute. Thanks for your question. Also, I have another question, and 
Um, this person would like to know um, if you can use an e-file to debulk the product at this step. You can. Um, so what we suggest is um, with even our prep, we have it to where you can use an e-file. You just want to make sure that it would be like a buffer consistency of what we're using. But absolutely, if you're really good with an e-file and you have the correct uh, attachments for the buffer, absolutely. So now I'm going to switch to the 180. So I'm just bringing this up to a high shine and still doing that kind of downward motion. This I found just is, is makes it look better for me, making sure that I get the edge. Now I'm going to move on to our Flex 220, 280. There again, don't forget, this would be your 220, this would be your 280. So I'm going to start with my 220 side. And try not to touch it uh, because you have oil on your hand. So we don't want to create any oil on it whatsoever. So just try to control her finger without actually touching it. So now I feel like I've gotten it to a nice high shine. Just make sure you really look at it. And if you feel like you haven't gotten it to a really good high shine, just buff it a little bit more. Okay. So now I'm actually going to dust this off. You can actually use one of the wipes as well if you feel like it's not getting it. And you can actually bend your wipe, kind of get in the cuticle area, side walls, and brush that off. Brush underneath. And then you're going to go to step two again. You're going to activate again. We want to make sure that that product is completely dry. So I'm going to apply activator. And when you apply it, you're going to see how it, the consistency is a little bit different from the first time I played activator. It's kind of slick. Uh, so you know that you've actually brought that up to a kind of high shine. So I'm going to let that sit. And I'm just going to do the same filing onto our ombre. I have another question. And mm -hmm. this person would like to know if the product self level. It does not. <laughs> it does not. Um, like I said, practice, practice, practice. Um, when we first came out with this, what I would, would do is I would ask certain clients, hey, do you mind me practicing on you a new product? I also got um, like the stick, um, the plastic sticks that you can practice stuff because those are easier to actually put into the powder. Instead of a palette, you actually want to maybe get the plastic sticks and actually keep practicing on those. What she means by the plastic sticks is um, just something that has like a little a, a nail on the end of it, just like a nail tip. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. And also, um, they would like to know about removal of the powder perfection. So that's a great question. So the removal on the powder perfection is when they come in, you actually want to take either your e-file or uh, your 180 file, and you actually want to file like I'm filing right now. You want to go down to the first layer of color. And then you would actually take one of your removal wraps, which I have one right here. You would take an extra uh, wipe. And these are the Expert Touch lint free wipes that she's using. And then I have the Expert Touch lacquer removal. And I'm going to fold this into four, just for like an extra padding. Apply it on here. And then saturate this. Uh, with our Expert Touch Remover. I'm going to fold this down. And then after you get it down to the first layer, um, then I would actually wrap it, and I would wrap it like a little burrito and let that sit on there for about 15, 20 minutes. If you don't file, it's going to take a lot longer to come off. So I suggest definitely filing it down. Great question. Thank you. So I'm just going to continue on this. If you guys have any questions, we can answer questions right now. And I'm just going to shake this up. I have another question. Mm -hmm. If we don't have to cap the free edge, how do you ensure that the product doesn't lift at the free edge at the end of the service? So as long as you uh, make sure that you've covered the whole nail plate, because um, when you go in and you actually start filing again, like I said, you're going to file that free edge. So as long as you went all the way to the, the bottom, which you're going to see because of the color, you're not going to have any problem. As long as your prep's good, you won't have any lifting. Uh, that's another reason why we use the Bond-Aid, so you don't have that peeling or chipping. 
Um, and this usually, with our gel color and our powder perfection, it usually lasts two to three weeks on the nail, depending on your client. If they have, um, you know, if they grow their nails a little bit quicker, some do than others, uh, they may get bored with the color, uh, just depending on uh, what their needs are. But typically it lasts about two to three weeks. And we don't recommend, um, so with our powder perfection, it's a little bit different. We do not recommend using a tip with this. It, it's a thin product. It's only to support natural nails only. You can't sculpt with this either. It's not a sculptable uh, product. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're doing it. It's for someone that um, necessarily can't use gel color because maybe their nails are a little bit thinner, so they need a little bit more strength. This is an acrylic base uh, powder, but it's definitely very, very thin and only meant for natural nails. And this comes in just over 100 colors right now. And as you know, uh, with OPI, we are constantly coming out with new shades, so I'm sure we'll come out with more in the future as well. And you can, oh, I'm sorry, and you can custom blend these. Like I said earlier, you can mix them. The cool thing with this too is you can actually uh, add glitter to any of the colors. We do suggest that you use a base grade uh, glitter if you're gonna add glitter to it. So if you do wanna have that glittery look and we don't offer it the glitter in a shade that you prefer, you can create it yourself. I you also just, have oh, another, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I have a question about removal. Um, mm -hmm. She wants to know if you just scrape it off with an orange wood stick just like you would a gel color. <laughs> so yes, that's essentially what you would do. Yes, yeah, so with the removal, um, it is, when you remove it, I'm glad you asked that because I should have explained this a little bit more earlier. When you do remove it, when you have it wrapped, you wanna make sure you take one finger and you remove it and you twist and you pull off. It's kind of like a gummy consistency. So if you have any left over, you do wanna take your stick, uh, your cuticle stick, either wood or plastic, you never wanna use metal. And you just wanna lightly be able to um, remove that. If it's definitely not coming off, then you just wanna rewrap it and just let that stay on there for just a few more minutes. Um, but it will kind of roll off uh, in the consistency. You don't wanna take all of them off at one time because it will dry back again. So you wanna make sure you just do one finger at a time. That will definitely help you. All right, so I've already go ahead, I went ahead and put my activator on to my ombre look. So another trick with your top coat, and when you're ready, is you're gonna take one of your um, um, Expert Church wipes, and we're gonna wipe that finger to make sure that there's no extra activator that's on that finger. Okay, another trick that I have with a top coat, is you're gonna take your top coat, and we're just gonna get a small bead at the end. Okay. Very small bead and you're not going to put pressure on this nail whatsoever. You're basically going to float this product and I'm going to set it on here and I'm going to float the product. If you see any stringage, that means that you need to just wait a few more minutes that the activator is not completely cured and if you went ahead and did put your top coat on top of it, you can actually mess up your brush because the activator that's left on here is activating your brush. So you just wanna back off. So when you apply your top coat, you kinda wanna make sure you only do a several, like one, uh, like a three stroke or a four stroke. You don't wanna actually apply, like keep working it. You don't wanna overwork this product. So you're just gonna allow one coat to dry. You would do that on one whole hand. It takes about one or two minutes to dry and then you would do a second coat. You can kind of tell when the second coat's ready. Like right now, it's still a little shiny. It gets slightly dull, and you know then it's dry because when you put the second coat on, it's extremely shiny. It's the same shine as your gel color. I have another question, mm -hmm. um, and she would like to know if you can do fill-ins with this. No, so um, with that as well, we don't recommend fill-ins. What happens is when you do fill-ins, 
is you're gonna see, number one, the color consistency. You're gonna see shadowing from your fill-in. Because when I was explaining earlier, if you missed a side of the nail, you wanna go ahead and just do the, coat the whole nail. The reason being is because you're gonna see that shadowing. Um, and also when you do do that, um, you're gonna actually have it get thicker and thicker. As you can see, this is a thin product. We don't need it to be extremely thick. Um, and then also I would think that after time it would break down and that you could actually cause lifting um, if you tried to fill it in. So we don't want that. We wanna ensure it so you would soak it off just like gel color every two to three weeks. So I'm gonna see if this nail's ready for me. And I'm gonna go back in, it's been about one or two minutes, so I'm gonna go back in and do my second coat. I'm just gonna give this one just a few more seconds. I have another question, mm -hmm. question for you. Um, this person would like to know if they can put polish over the top of this. So when you do do um, the clear, absolutely you could put regular lacquer on top of it or our infinite shine. These are great questions. You guys are good tonight. All right, so there you have it. That is our French and our ombre with our powder perfection. off your manicure we have several different products with our pro spa these are just some of the products that we offer uh, we have several different products when you're doing gel color or powder perfection you want to make sure that you do the surface first and then do any type of scrubs mask anything that you want to add on to make that um, manicure even more like a deluxe manicure so we do have scrubs we have masks in this What's so great about Pro Spa is it's actually a facial uh, type grade product for your hands and feet. Who doesn't want that? Um, it has an amazing smell. It's got a very nice citrus smell, um, but it's just very nourishing. And every product on here actually does something really well to the actual skin because it is a face grade product for your hands and feet. So I'm actually going to use three products, four products actually. So first I'm going to finish her off with our Pro Spa Cuticle Oil. Because I have used some NAS99, which is our 99% alcohol, um, I have dried out some of her cuticles, so I want to re-nourish uh, those cuticles back. So I'm just going to apply a drop. I'm going to massage that in. I have another question while mm -hmm. we're doing this. Um, she would like to know, um, can you use a gel top coat as just another option for a top coat? Or a top coat with powder perfection? Uh, we don't recommend using the gel. This system was designed uh, for natural nails, so you didn't have to have a light. Um, so we just don't recommend it. Um, so uh, now I'm going to use our protective hand serum. You only need a little bit of this, it's going to go on your hand. That's all you need. Uh, the great thing about this product, too, is you don't need a lot of it uh, to actually get the good results. This I've actually used on my hands uh, for the past several weeks, and I can tell that my wrinkles are getting a little bit better, as well as my age spots. So this would be for a deluxe service. You could add this in um, because it is a treatment. Now I'm going to use our protective hand and nail cuticle cream. This is a thicker uh, cream than our whip. We have a whip that you could use for manicures or pedicures. This one's a little bit thicker. Because it is still winter um, here, you wanna make sure that you use maybe a little bit thicker one. This is really great for someone that washes their hands a lot. So maybe a nurse or hairdressers out there. This actually, after you wash it one time, it actually, you can feel it still on there. Um, and don't forget those elbows. And just to give another little bit of information on this, this is very, male and female friendly smelling. It's definitely good for, it's not gonna to be too fruity for a male, it's just a really nice clean citrus scent. Absolutely, I wish you guys could smell it. So nice. And to finish her off, we're not done yet. So to finish her off, I actually have our moisturizing body spray. This actually is gonna lock in that moisture that I just put on her, her hands and nails. And then you would be completely done. That looks awesome, Lisa. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed.
enjoyed that. That is my take.